What is happening, everybody? MG here, MG Covers, bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video, Introduction to My New NFL Sports Betting Model. This video will be a little bit different. Um, I don't really have a script or an outline. I just want to talk about the model itself and give you some really, really solid tips on how to create a, quote, plug-and-play model. Other people in the industry call it a bottom-up method. Um, which basically means you're not using any line movement, just 100% model. Before we do that, as always, if you're watching this video for the first time, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It's a ton of content. I'm different than most handicappers. I focus more on the educational part. I also offer a service as well where you can learn the business. Um, so if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get a ton of content and be able to watch a ton of videos and improve your sports handicapping. If you follow me on social media, I put out a ton of content on Instagram as well. Uh, Twitter, same screen name as MG Covers, cover spell with the Z. A lot of times there's things I see in the marketplace or I want to make a point about building a model or something I see um, with regards to a particular sport. I'll post that on Instagram immediately so you get a ton of value, a ton of education simply by following me. So there's a link to follow me in the description of this video. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about this. NFL model that I'm super excited about and we're only what two or three weeks away from college football season starting and maybe another month before NFL so super excited been testing a lot of things I do want to review briefly uh, the Major League Baseball model we've had a ton of success with that we had a huge day yesterday um, this is at my monitoring service we ended up uh, right at a $900 profit yesterday for the week $2,500 profit and then year to date well let me show you this run we had a it's crazy we had a 0 and 6 run right here um to sort of start right before the week and then went on a 17 and 6 run including the 4 and 0 sweep yesterday and that brings the year to date total for the model 152 and 152 wins 130 losses and we were at 38.91 units so if you're new to this channel the correct way to grade your model um, or your plays, one play is one unit. So if you win one game, that's one unit. Um, this example here, uh, let me see, like this is an, a dog. We placed a wager of plus 127. So if we win that, we're up 1.27 units. So that's 38.91 units for MLB grading one play, one unit. So super excited about that. All right, so that's baseball. Let's dive into some football. Um, and what I really want to show you is like how – uh, to create a bottom up or what I like to refer to as a plug and play model. A plug and play model means you use a 100% model. There's nothing that you handicap subjectively like injuries or form or line movement, um, anything like that. So if you deem that to be successful or if you deem that to be important, then you need to put that into the model itself so that the model is self-contained and you're going to rely on the model 100%. Same thing I do in baseball. So let's go through this. Now, what's really important to, to understand about NFL, NFL is a very difficult sport to handicap, and let's talk about why. I posted this on Instagram. Super fascinating. You know, baseball plays 162 games. That's a lot of baseball games, so you get a huge sample size. Teams in the NFL only play 16 games. And they have, what, two bye weeks? So it's a very small sample size. So think about this for just a second. The entire baseball season, the entire NFL season, could be is basically two weeks of baseball. So if you factor in two weeks of baseball, teams will play about 14 games. So the NFL season is 16 games, but they only play one game a week. So essentially, if they played every day, they would be finished with the season in about two and a half weeks. Is that not crazy? So you're dealing with a significantly smaller sample size. And the margin of victory is smaller as well. And we're going to talk about that now. So this is from 2020. Um, what you're looking at, adding up all the points scored by all the teams year to date. Teams averaged in 2020 24.5 points a game. So that means the average total number of points scored in an NFL game was 48. That was four years ago, 2020. This is mind-blowing. Look what it was last year. 21.7. So 
So basically a field goal difference. Now, you don't think that is a lot, but that is huge. Why is that huge in NFL? Because in NFL, the average margin of victory, the most popular margin of victory is what? Three points. What's the second um, most popular margin of victory? Seven points, the touchdown. And then I think third, fourth, and fifth or anything in between the three and the seven. So the majority of the time in NFL, team's going to win by three or seven. So you had 42 points total is what teams averaged. Now, what that means in terms of a model, that means if you can look at like teams were like this in 2020, averaging 24 points a game, now they're like this, averaging 21 points a game, which means they're closer together. So there's even more variance and even more unpredictability. So – if you're starting out, NFL is a very difficult sport to, to model, very, extremely difficult because you get a huge sample size in Major League Baseball and you don't have that type of a sample size in major in NFL. So if you say, I want a 10-game sample, well, hell, the season is only 18 weeks. So you wouldn't start wagering until week 10. So it's very difficult sport to model. But hopefully I can sort of guide you through this um, and this will at least improve your – modeling for NFL. All right, so the week we're going to look at, we're going to look at the week of October 16th for NFL season 2022. And what you see over here on the left, these are basically my games. Now, what you're looking at here, this is the difference. This is not the line itself. I, I basically created every team, and I ranked all 32 NFL teams via the model via the stats that I'm using, and then this is the difference in their ranking. So I assign them a, a certain point value. So, for example, Denver is nine points better than the Chargers. Minnesota is 15 points better than Miami via the model is basically what that means. Now, all right, so what you want to do when you're creating um, another t term I, I called this years ago was a criterion-based model, I mean, if, if – teams meet a certain criteria it's a play again the marketplace will call this a bottom-up method i like to call it a plug-and-play model so what you have to do is you have to eliminate all the subjectivity so we have to have for this particular model there's four rules and we'll go through this so the first time i created this looking through this so what we want to do is we want to look at our line and look at the books line and so what, what I've talked about a lot on this channel is margin difference. So immediately I thought, what if we just played teams that are double-digit margin, meaning this team is, via my model, they are a double-digit difference than their opponent. So that's step one. So let's go ahead and play these teams. And actually I added one more point. I took it down to nine, which means nine or more difference, differential, it's an automatic play if the line is seven or less, meaning it's minus seven, minus six. If it's minus seven and a half, it's a no play. And one of the reasons why I've adopted that this year, and I think that's the way I'm going to play, again, going back to what we looked at here, teams only score an average in three touchdowns. So that margin of victory is very tight. And, and you'll go through – if you go back and look at last year's box score, it's a great tip. It's rare for a team to win by more than a touchdown, rare. Um, I'll actually do some research on that and give you some definite numbers. But for me, I'm only going to play games where we are minus seven or less. Now, if we're getting, you know, plus eight, plus 10 or whatever, that would be a play. But very difficult to beat a team by more than a touchdown in NFL. So the first rule that I have for this is we're going to play teams that are nine or greater goal, goal differential, nine, or, nine points or greater differential via my model. So that would be number one, Denver. So we're playing Denver here, and we're taking the points. If it's three or greater, if it's two and a half or less, we are going to play on the money line. So in this situation, we will take the points here. And I might explain that in another video because that will that contradicts some things I've talked about in the past. So we're taking the points here, three and a half. They lose by three, so that would be a cover, so that's a win. All right, our next one here is Minnesota. We have Minnesota minus 15, so that's a greater than 9. And Minnesota was minus 3 here, so that's a play and a win. 
All right, New England and Cleveland. We had Cleveland as the favorite here. The line was minus two and a half for Cleveland. I'm using bookmakers closing line. So that was a loss. And our next game is scroll all the way down here to Jacksonville and Indianapolis. Indianapolis was minus one closing line. They won 34 to 27, so they win in cover, and that's a win for us. Then we have Arizona and Seattle. We had a differential, huge differential of Arizona minus 21. They were actually favorites in this game, minus two and a half, but, but lost to uh, Seattle. So that would be a loss. Carolina and the Rams, again, this is to my point here. Um, Carolina and the Rams, we have Carolina minus, is that right? So Carolina is minus 10 here. We're getting nine and a half. So that is a loss. I thought that was another example. My bad there for the confusion. All right. We have Kansas City minus 16. And they were getting three points. So we take the points and that would be a loss. Dallas and Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a minus 21 point differential via my line. And the line is minus six and a half. So that is a I cover. I just had a brain freeze. Couldn't do my math. <laughs> All right, Washington and Chicago. Thursday night game, we had Chicago. We had Washington minus 17-point differential via the model, and they were minus one and one and covered. So that was positive, right? So we went one, two, two and three, three and three, three and four. Four and four, five and four. So we go five and four here, right? So five and four is actually good. That's positive, right? So we had nine plays. So five divided by nine would be 56%. So if we did that long term the entire year, that would be good, right? So now this is something else. So, you know, can we squeeze out some more more profit? You, I mean, obviously you could play it that way, which is what I originally thought. And then when I started doing some testing, here's what I came up with. Like, let me just show you how I discovered this. So if I look at a look at San Francisco and Atlanta, so we have via my model that is statistically driven. And this is an important point. The reason why a model is so important, the model uses stats. So there is no bias factored into the line. And what I mean by that is my line is 100 percent generated by stats and more more importantly recent stats the books line is driven by public's perception a, a very similar to what we like the stock market so public perception drives the stock market and that's also what drives the line so the bookmakers assess the line based on the public's perception of that team for example those of you that have followed this channel we have cashed oakland a's like crazy this this past month crazy the reason we've cashed them a lot on the money, playing them as money line dogs, is they have a losing record. But statistically, via the model, we've had them as favorites um, for the past couple of weeks and cashed on them many times, maybe seven or eight times. But the public perceives them to be bad, right? Because they have a losing record. So the books have to factor in the public's perception. So that's how you can basically win in this business if you use a statistically driven model with no bias and the sports book line have bias factored into that a lot of times that line is inaccurate all right so let's take a look at this tampa pittsburgh notice the differential between my line is it's only a two right you say well you have pittsburgh minus two but again going back to what we realize with a team's only scoring 21 points team the games are very tight so the most popular margin is either a three or a seven. So in essence, the way that I cap this or looking at it, this is basically even. These teams are even via the model. And look at the line. The line was Tampa Bay way overvalued, minus nine and a half. But Pittsburgh was plus nine and a half. So Pittsburgh wins that one. Let's take a look at another one here. San Francisco and Atlanta. My model was basically dead even, meaning if you subtract the power ranking for San Francisco, minus Atlanta's power ranking, it was basically even. 
and we come over here and look at San Francisco and Atlanta, they had Atlanta plus three and a half. So that was a win. So here's what I concluded. If the line is four or less, four or less, we basically look at that game as a pick them, meaning four or less differential, point differential via my line or via my model. It's basically even. So we play the dog if they're getting plus three or more points. So again, so real quickly, because we view that it so that differential so small, and I've talked about margin of error, meaning we look at those teams as even if the differential via my line is is four or less. And then so we're going to play the dog if we're getting three. Why do we why do how do I come up with three? That's basically a field goal, right? So we'll go through and do that now. So we're so right here we add in that rule. So this is a pick them. So that means Atlanta is getting three or more here. So we take the points here and Atlanta is a win. Tampa Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh is getting nine and a half points. That differential is via my line is, is four or less. So we look at that game as even we're getting more than three, three or more. So that's a play and Pittsburgh wins. Let's go down here to the Jets and Green Bay. So, again, that's dead on the number. Jets and Green Bay, we view that game as even. Let's take a look. They had Green Bay minus 7.5, and, and Jets were getting plus 7.5. So that would be a play via the model for the Jets at plus 7.5. And, and that's it. So that increased. So we got it. So we picked up. We picked up three extra wins that way. So how cool is that, right? And that makes sense, right? Um. So when the when the when the games start, again, just remember that the most popular margin of victory is three, and after that is seven. So if we're assessing via my model, and the model's good as these teams being even, that means it's what I call basically a 50-50 game. What a 50-50 game is. Both teams have an equal opportunity to win. So if we're getting three or more points, we have we have edge there, right? Now the other rule that I added in oh, if it's seven or less and the line is seven and a half or greater, play the dog. So I added that one in. I don't think we have any that qualify. Well, let's see. So basically seven or less and the line is plus seven and a half or greater. We play the dog. The reason um, I added that in was simply what I showed you in the beginning. So teams are only scoring, you know, 21, 22 points a game. Very difficult to beat a team by more than seven, by more than a touchdown. So if we're getting seven and a half points and my differential is seven or less, we would play the dog. So let's see if any of these qualify here. So we have Cincinnati and New Orleans. So it's minus six Cincinnati. And the dog is plus three. So that would be a no play. All right. Baltimore Giants. Um, Baltimore is minus seven. And they are getting five and a half, so that would be a no play. So now if Giants were getting – you can see that that would actually work. So hypothetically, what if the Giants were getting seven and a half? That would have been a play and that would have been a win, right? And what was the other one? Cincinnati and New Orleans. So same deal there. So that one's seven or less. If New Orleans was getting seven and a half, that would have been a cover, right? So pretty cool. And let's make sure – let's scroll down, make sure we don't have any other ones in here. Yep, that's it. And then finally, the last rule – Yeah, I just came up with this. So if the seven or less play only if that team is getting three or more points. Yeah, that's basically what I came up with. Oh, I know what it is. So if it's a, another rule I put in there, if it's seven, so if a team is minus seven or less, we will play them if they're getting plus three. Right? That's the that's the favorite team, right? Or the other rule will be if it's seven or less. And it's plus seven and a half, regardless of 
we would simply play the dog, if that makes sense. So I'll say that again. So if it's seven or less, meaning here Baltimore. Now, if Baltimore was getting plus three or more points, that would be a play. So they're not. Same deal with Cincinnati. Cincinnati, it's six or less, but they're not getting three or more points. So that would be a pass. And see if we got another one in here. Nope. And then the other rule is if it's seven or less and either one of those teams is getting seven and a half or more points, we would take the seven and a half points. So if we tally this up, let's see how we end it. It's a one and oh, two and oh, two and one, three and one, four and one, five and one, six and one, six and two, six and three, six and four. Seven and four, eight and four. So we end up eight and four, which is really cool, right? So there's only 16 games played in the NFL season. And again, after reading that Billy Walters book, um, that's one thing I discovered about margin. Um, what he talked about. So you have a smaller margin of victory for NFL. So there's going to be greater variance. So it would be better to play more games in NFL. And he said he averaged between five and 10 games on NFL Sunday. So ended up with 12 for, for this particular week. Uh, so super excited about this. Um, before we get out there, I'll make some closing points. Um, if you want access to this model, uh, once the season starts, we'll probably crank this model out right around week three or week four. So we need some data. Uh, you can get access to it for 50 bucks a month. Very inexpensive. Um, you also get access to all the Major League Baseball lines that I send out every day. In addition to that, you get access to over 150 coaching videos on the website, coaching videos that are not on the YouTube channel specific, specifically for coaching clients. And if you want access to everything I mentioned, in addition to all my plays via the models, um, that's 100 bucks a month. The best value, instead of paying 100 bucks each month, you can save about $600, pay for the entire year, $499. Pay that one time, you get access to everything on the website for $500 bucks for an entire year, which is a really good deal. And um, there's a link to join in the description box. So some closing points with this for NFL. You need volume. I think you want to have volume. And if you're going to have a play a team and you have points to cover, you need to make sure that margin is significant. Like for me, the way I did my model, if the point differential was 10 or greater, it was automatically automatic play if the line is seven or less because it's very difficult to beat a team by more than seven. Why? Because they're not scoring as many points. And I think that trend's going to stay the same. I watched that first preseason game, and it looks like they're going to be zero kickoff returns for a touchdown. Zero. Um, and then also, too, considering teams are already shrunk and – the best team to worst team is a lot tighter now the NFL than it ever has been. If you the lower some of these differentials, you have to assume it's basically even. So via my model, if it's a four point differential, depending on how you structure your model. So I mean like let me give it to you in layman's terms. So the the twentieth best team via your model is basically even with the twenty sixth best team. So if you're ranking all of your teams via your stat model, the twentieth team is probably this even with the 26th best team. Does that make sense? Same deal if the second best team via your model is playing the sixth best team, it's basically even is a way to think about it. So you could kind of structure and come up with different rules. But the reason for doing it that way, with all of those rules, I have a plan and process for every single game. So there's no handicapping involved. So a lot of times in the past, um, the way I originally started handicapping, I would have – the objective side, which is the model, then I would have the subjective side, line movement, injuries, et cetera. So then a lot of times what happened when I started handicapping subjectively, a lot of times it clouds your judgment. It creates doubt because it's very difficult you for to sort of statistically quantify a lot of those things like, all right, they're missing their, their number one running back. How do I factor that into the line or the line moved against me? And then what ends up happening, if you have too many subjective things going through your head, you get stuck on a game. That's why I prefer, and I've sort of adopted this philosophy of just creating as many plug-and-play models as, as I can and having a real strict criteria so it eliminates all that. So now I can look at a model. If When I begin to backtest um, other weeks with this model, 
it's very simple to handicap. And then I may notice when I start back testing this, I back tested this for several weeks and it was profitable, but I'll do a full 2023 back test for the entire season as well as 2022. I may end up tweaking the criteria a little bit more depending on, you know, what would help me profit. So anyway, I know this video was long, but I did it that way for a reason to sort of teach you and show you how I structure a plug and play model. Hope you like it. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.